Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and in today's video, I'm going to make the transition from console to PC really simple for you. So as most of you are probably going to know, I started off on console. I was an Xbox player for many, many years, and I'd also played a lot of things like PlayStation. I mean, I started off back in the Sega Mega Drive, so that sort of shows how old I am and how long I've been playing on consoles for. But nevertheless, I decided that I wanted to move across to PC for Rainbow Six because it seemed like a more competitive environment. I actually hit Diamond for five seasons in a row on console and I wanted a new challenge. And that new challenge for me was, as I say, jumping across to PC. I'd, I'd heard that everyone said, you know, a Diamond on console is like a gold on PC. And I wanted to see if that was true. So I went out, I invested a lot of money in a PC. I sat down and tried playing on it and my hands just didn't know what they were doing. I mean, I genuinely, I've, I've used computers quite a lot. I can type, I can touch type, I can do all of that. But what I couldn't do is I couldn't figure out how to do quite simple things for most people. My hands wouldn't really catch up. Like a perfect example is moving around and trying to lean in Rainbow Six. Now, most of you are probably going to know that as and when you try and move and lean, you are pressing A and Q at the same time. And that means you can't go forward because your middle finger comes off of W and onto Q. So little things like that made it quite difficult for me. And I looked into loads and loads of different ways that other people were trying to get around this problem. I mean, I know for a fact that some people utilize the lean on things like C and V or C and X, so they can do it with their thumb. And that makes a lot of sense because you don't have to take the main three fingers off of the, the W, A and D. And then you can obviously use your middle finger to come back to S. But it was it was pretty confusing. I've seen other people say that you can um, swap Q and E around. So if you're moving out to the left and you're trying to lean to the left, you press E, which is on the right, using your index finger, which you wouldn't have been using otherwise. So that's, again, another way around it. Now, the biggest difficulty for console players is you predominantly use your right hand. Um, there's a joke in there somewhere, but we're not going to make it. With the right hand, your right hand is doing things like um, pressing the, the actual buttons themselves, A, B, X, and Y, or if you're on PlayStation, triangle, square, X, and circle. And then your right fingers are using you know, R, B, or R1, and the trigger itself, or R2, as well as doing your thumb on the analog stick. So your right hand is doing loads and loads of stuff. The left hand, yes, it sometimes comes across to like a D-pad or something, but predominantly it will stay on the analog stick and it will do L1, L2, or LB uh, left trigger, something along those lines. So it's doing a lot less. And when you jump across to PC, it's the polar opposite. Your right hand is on the mouse doing point and click, and your left hand is doing all of the work. It's doing all of the crouching, sprinting, your in-game comms potentially, you're throwing grenades, you're leaning, you do everything on the left hand on the keyboard because all of the keys are situated there and it makes a lot of sense to do that. So the biggest difficulty for me, as I say, was trying to get my left hand to do everything that my right hand was previously doing. Now, this is where this came in. Now, I'm not sponsored or endorsed by um, Logitech by any means. However, I did pick up myself a Logitech G502. Now, this is the, the G502 Lightspeed. It is the wireless version. This is not what I started on. It is pretty much, well, it's almost identical um, looks and feel-wise and button-wise. It's almost exactly the same. Now, the Logitech G502 was one of those middle ground mice. You can get mice that have barely anything on them. They've just quite literally got the right click, the left click, maybe one or two thumb buttons. Um, and then you get the mice that are more for like massively multiplayer online role playing games, which you get about 400 different buttons on there. And it looks like something off of like Star Trek or something. And that wasn't really for me. And it's not really the best play for first person shooters. But the Logitech sort of the 502 seems to offer like a middle ground. It had enough buttons that my right hand could do a bit more. And it didn't have too many that it was getting in the way. It was just it seemed like a good amount, if that makes sense. But here's the biggest selling point. And the thing that made that transition so simple for me was this. The scroll wheel itself, you can push left and right. Just by, you know, using your index finger, you can push it left and right, as well as like normally scrolling up and down. And that is the that is the play. That is 100% the play. And here's why. If you open up the software, what you can do is you can bind all of the individual keys to new buttons. So instead of it being a mouse button, you can tell it to do a certain thing, obviously. What you can also do is the left and right on the scroll wheel, you can tell that to do certain things. Now, what I've done with the mouse is I've set it up so that it pretty much replicates what is on my keyboard. I'm not replacing the keybinds on my keyboard. I'm just copying them. So a perfect example is Q. I put Q on the right hand side of the thumb wheel 
so that if I push it to the left, it does the letter Q and it reads that as an input. And subsequently, I did the same on the other side. If I push the thumb wheel to the right, it does the letter E. So I can both lean each way, you know? This in turn enabled me to do lots and lots of different things. I could straight away free up fingers on the Q and the E buttons. And I can use my index or my uh, middle finger to do that on the mouse while I'm moving around. I also went ahead and doubled up things like the thumb buttons. I've got it so it's set on the primary gadget and the secondary gadget. Now, the secondary gadget was on G initially, and I found it quite difficult to do things like hold down grenades and cook them while leaning, while moving out from behind cover. That was really, really difficult for me at first. So doubling that up so I could just hold it with my right thumb while I was doing the rest of the work meant that I could have a lot more freedom in doing what I was doing. And this is genuinely the one thing that made that transition really simple for me. I know for a fact a lot of people are going to be out there saying, you did what? That's that's not the play, dude. You're never going to get better if you don't learn to use the keyboard. And I do agree with them to a, a certain degree. But by doubling up the keybinds that I had, I could use my left hand and my right hand. I tried my hardest to not become reliant on just using the mouse, but also utilizing the keyboard as and when I could. I would do it in a way that if my right hand was busy, I was aiming and trying to shoot or something, my left hand could do all of the hard work and vice versa. If I was busy trying to crouch or sprint and, you know, change my position or melee, for example, at the same time, I could then do other stuff with the right hand. It was totally dependent on situations. And that's what made the transition really, really simple for me. Now, I wouldn't advocate trying this unless I had already tested this myself. And I've also spoken to other people. Now, I play online with a guy called Rob. Very, very often play games like Siege with him. And he picked up the exact same mouse after my recommendation. And he agreed. He said, you know what? That made the difference for me. It really did. And subsequently, through Twitch streams, I've spoken to several people. They asked me about it. And I explained exactly this to you guys. So we're now on about four or five people, maybe more than that, that have now tried it. They've picked up the G502 for 30 to 50 quid. Um, I think it's about 30 when it was on sale. I picked mine up for 50 and then Rob got his like a week later in a sale for 30. So that was, uh, yeah, I should have done my research there. But nevertheless, that mouse made a big difference. Now, I'm not saying you have to stick with that mouse forever. What I'm saying is, is the transition and your initial getting used to playing on PC this can really help it. By leaving the keybinds doubled up, you can continue to learn with your left hand and practice with the, the keyboard itself. And then in the future, as and when you become more comfortable and proficient with that, you'll find yourself using the scroll wheel a lot less. And eventually you can just replace it. You can go and buy yourself a, a G Pro or something like that if you want to. I would definitely recommend giving this a try and seeing how you get on with it. It's a mouse that's not going to break the bank. And if you've only just moved to PC, a mouse is pretty important. Like it's one of the most important things you're going to use, certainly if you're playing things like first person shooters or, or any sort of game for that matter. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Are you just in the middle of transitioning from console to PC? Have you been on PC for a while and thought, you know what, I, I'm still struggling? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you've tried this, Throw it down in the comments below. Let me know how you get on. I really do hope that it works for you as well as it did for me. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe for all things Rainbow Six. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.